James Ehrlich on uh, several times on the program, and he has been doing a lot of research on bergamot and a specific yeah, type of absolutely. bergamot. There is amazing literature on bergamot extracts for liver disease. It's really stunning. I don't, I don't really talk a lot about herbal extracts or, or uh, uh, phytonutrients that much, but the literature on this is just mind-blowing for fatty liver disease, for metabolic syndrome, for diabetes. And they all go together, by the way. Fatty liver disease is part of the diabetic syndrome, so anything that you do for your liver is also going to help your sugar. So get on the Bergamax. That might be another thing that you want to do. Glutamine powder, so that you, you want to help your body make glutathione. Glutathione is a, a very powerful detoxifier, can help with fatty liver. And then also uh, building glutathione with NAC, NAC, and I'm not sure if you can get that there, but you can certainly get it in this country, and selenium. And I'm not sure. Between glutamine, NAC, and selenium, and whey protein, which is also a good source of glutamine and glutathione, by the way, uh, between those four, you've got some really powerful liver nutrients. That is whey protein, which contains amino acids for building glutathione, glutamine, NAC, and selenium. You've got four very important elements of the glutathione molecule, which is probably the body's number one detoxifier. And remember, the liver is your detox organ as well as, your, uh, digest as, well as a digestive organ. Now, anything you could do for the bile system will also help. So your ultimate enzymes, we talked about bile salts earlier. And uh, it's very important now that you're not on a statin drug. One of the reasons why statin drugs are so toxic is because they suppress cholesterol, and cholesterol equals bile. Bile is a type of cholesterol. So if you're on a statin drug, not only are you running risks of liver toxicity because your liver has to process the stuff, but you're running risks of liver toxicity because you're not going to make, you're not going to be able to make the cholesterol derivatives like bile that are important for liver health. So, and by the way, staying off all drugs is important, prescription or otherwise for the liver, as you pointed out accurately. If you, if you take a, a prescription drug or any kind of drug for long term, you run higher risks of liver toxicity because your liver has to detoxify the drugs. So between, oh, and by the way, intermittent fasting is another thing that you can do, and also probiotics is another thing you can do for the liver. So between selenium and glutamine and whey protein and bile salts and digestive enzymes and treating yourself like a diabetic and also uh, intermittent fasting can help and selenium, you've got some wonderful nutrients that can uh, help protect your liver. Last but most certainly not least, vitamin E is super duper protective for the liver as well, and vitamin E is not found in many foods that at least not in, uh, not in good high quantities, high concentrations. So if you want to exploit or leverage the power of vitamin E for your liver, you got to make sure you're, you're supplementing with 400 international units a day. And as we said before in this program, uh, with vitamin E, you want the mixed tocopherol form and the mixed tocotrienol form. So you got lots of stuff there. Uh, and don't underestimate the importance of caloric restriction and intermittent fasting when it comes to fatty liver disease and liver health. Is that helpful, Kevin? Yeah, I do that uh, fasting. I have uh, the omega fish oils. I yeah. here in Russia, it's amazing. You could get bottles of the uh, tocopherol uh, vitamin E. Yeah, I get retinol, eleven uh, percent cream. Uh, Topical? No, 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 it's an oil. Eleven percent retinol. Uh, vitamin B three. Very interesting. Now, do you have health food stores there and, and place vitamin stores and that uh, kind of they thing? They do. They do have them. Uh, but I have a uh, pharmacy that, that gets these oils Got and we take care of them. I'm taking two different types of um, uh, probiotics. How's the um, food situation? How, are there, is it, can you get organic foods? Are there GMO foods? What, what's the food situation? Um, I know what the codes are for the GMO. I avoid them like the plague. Okay. Now they got this uh, counter sanctions, and the food is getting a little bit strict. Um, it's a myth about uh, there's no GMO here. It's, it's, you could see it on the corn. There, it's a myth? Did you say? It's a myth. There's GMO here. It, it's fire beware. Like, Kevin, there's the music. Got to take a break. We yeah. got Troy Opperly take coming up at the bottom of the hour. Thanks for a call from, from Russia. Right. Appreciate it, Kevin. God bless you, my man. All right, take care. All right, that was kind of cool. Okay, we got Troy Opperly coming up at the bottom of the hour. We're going to talk enzymes, enzyme nutrition, and... Uh, and more. We'll talk maybe a little probiotics as well. Troy knows about that too. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. You can purchase Longevity products right off the website, brightsideben.com, or you can go to pharmacistben.com 
or criticalhealthnews.com. And if you're interested in purchasing any of my Truth Treatment products, you can go to Truth Treatments, uh, truthtreatments.com. Okay, I'm uh, excited to have our next guest on, Troy Opperly, the Enzyme Man. Troy's been working with enzymes for decades, and uh, he can tell us about a couple enzyme products and talk some general stuff about enzymes. There's a lot of misunderstandings about enzymes. You know, vitamins, as important as they are, are really, at least uh, the main vitamins, the uh, vitamin C and the B complex and vitamin K, are actually coenzymes. They actually help enzymes work. But the, the work of life, the work of livingness, is really about enzymes. Did I say that right, Troy? Yes, absolutely. Tell, tell us what you know about enzymes and tell us a little bit about why they're so important. Well, I always tell people, like, just imagine that like, your body contains millions of these building blocks which con continually renew and maintain your life. You know, without them, there wouldn't be a single person, plant, or animal uh, that could exist. They're the fountain of life, the magic force, the life energy, kind of the labor force, if you want to put it that way. So uh, how is it, though? How, I, those are all great terms and, and yeah. metaphorical, but, but how is it, what do they do? How are they working? Um, well, on a fundamental level, enzymes do two things. One, they're a catalyst. They, in other words, they speed things up. Scientists have been able to do some research. Um, without enzymes, a single chemical reaction could take up to 50 million years to occur <laughs> on its own. You add an enzyme to that equation, just one enzyme, and it takes 0.33 seconds. Just one enzyme. One enzyme. So less it takes millions of years and turns it into seconds or yes. split seconds. Split seconds. So that's amazing. That's that's the first thing that enzymes do. So again, if we look at the human body and all the things that we require on a daily basis, there are there are quite literally millions of reactions happening every 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 second that require an enzyme. So enzymes are making all those things happen for us. So that's the catalyst portion of it. Then the second side of it is the ability of enzymes to take large molecules and break them down into smaller molecules. Mm. It's like that's digestive most, enzymes. That's, yep, yeah, that's where most people, you know, know enzymes is in the digestive category. Right. So there's enzyme detergents, actually, too. I mean, you can buy the cl cleaners and cleansers that, that exploit this power, right? Absolutely. So enzymes have a, 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 an ability to break things down, and they have an ability, in essence, to build things up, would you say? Is that true? Uh, I mean, there are class, there's six different classifications of enzymes that go into the, some tear things apart, some put things back together. Yes. So what are the other four? Well, that gets into the, like the, um, uh, the, the, how they're activated, right? Like some of them, all the ones that we use as human beings are hydrolytic. So Meaning? That, that, that they require water in uh -huh. order to activate. So it's important whenever you do take an enzyme that water is present or you do take a little bit of water with it, so then that'll activate it. Some of the other enzymes are, are more dependent on um, whether it's pH ranges or different things um, to, to get them initiated. But from the human perspective, the only thing that we're really, really concerned with are going to be the hydrolytic enzymes. Enzymes that require water to do their work. Yep, exactly. That's why you can sell enzymes in a, in a supplement product. As long as there's no water, the stuff's inert, correct? Exactly. Once, uh -huh. you, once you put water, they activate. Got it. And that's when they start to stink and break down. I've worked with enzymes in skincare products, and they're kind of a nightmare to work with in skincare for that reason. <laughs> exactly. You're laughing. <laughs> Do no. you guys wear gas masks when you're working with the enzymes? We, we have to, yeah. They're PAPRs, so they're, they're air, air purifiers that initiate, pull, pull the air through a HEPA filter, and then blow fresh air up into the hood. So what talk, I want to talk a little bit about enzymes and their relationship to... Uh, to vitamins, the coenzymes, and also I want to talk about enzyme deficiency. But before we get into that, tell me a little bit about uh, Enzymolo Enzymology Research Center. That's your company, ERC Incorporated. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, it was started a little over 20 years ago, and uh, it was for two, for two main purposes. One is to be an enzyme international enzyme supplier. So a lot of the companies that that, that manufacture or put capsules uh, enzymes into capsules, we supply the enzymes to them. And then secondarily, we're a contract manufacturer. So most of the a, a good chunk of the companies out there that uh, that don't do their manufacturing, they come to come to guys like me to have their products manufactured, especially you know specifically enzymes. Tell us a little bit about the relationship between vitamins, which are coenzymes, and enzymes. Yeah, you know, we like you mentioned at the beginning of the show that that. I always considered enzymes are the absolute, you know, foundation. I mean, that 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 
if you were to take vitamins, in fact, there's a, a great enzyme book that was written in the 19, late 20s, early 30s um, that talked about enzymes. Enzyme, enzymes have been known and, and researched for over 100 years. They didn't even know what a vitamin was back in the late 20s, early 30s. They were still in the throes of trying to figure out what vitamins were. So vitamins have or, or always been secondary to enzymes. I mean, they don't work without enzymes. So if you are enzyme deficient and you're taking a boatload of daily vitamins, they're doing you zero good. And now, can you be? Can there be enzyme deficiencies? Absolutely. If we, if we look at, I just look at children today. I'm like, wow! I'm just amazed. And I, there are a lot of different studies that were done by Dr. Um, Edward Howell with with animals and showing the deficiency. Even the, even even Pottinger, that generation after generation of eating cooked processed foods, will end up producing uh, offspring you know that are deficient in certain enzymes. So if you look at lipase, that's the enzyme that breaks down fat. I mean, I, I, that's clearly not you know, in most children today are in very low amounts because they can't, they can't break down fat. That's why you see the obesity epidemic hmm. happening. So, so you're saying that we can be enzyme deficient from birth because of our, from, for generational reasons, from our grandparents and great-grandparents, is that right? Absolutely. So that means most of us are probably going to be enzyme deficient. At some level, sure. Huh. And now, from a food perspective, what do you recommend to restore enzymes? I always talk about sprouts and living foods. Any, any, what's your take on all that? Yeah, anything that, that there, there's, there's a couple of, uh, I'll just say two levels. The first level is eating raw food, which is uh, kind of like uh, treading water. You're not going to go, go deeper into the hole and you're not going to you know, you're not gonna make any forward progress. So uh, that's the first category. The second category is going to be raw fermented foods. So raw fermented foods actually have an excess amount of enzymes in them. So now you're kind of replenishing and gaining mm. ground and gaining health if you eat those types of foods. So again, that's going to be your sauerkrauts, your kimchi, uh, kefir type products. Now, most of these, most of these enzymes are, are, uh, require low pH, correct? Acid. Uh, it, it, you mean as far as the... the as far food? as their activity goes, as far as uh, being active. In regards to like the, the things you buy at the health food store? No, I mean, when you, when you, uh, when an enzyme, uh, when you take an enzyme and, and swallow an enzyme, doesn't there have to be a certain amount of acidity present for that enzyme to be activated? No. No, if you look at each enzyme has its own kind of characteristic pH mm. range, and Got most it. of the ones that are from a fermentation process are very wide, so most of them are going to be like from a 4 to a 10. Seriously? So it does, it, yeah, it does cover. I didn't know that. You know, yeah, they're active in the, in the acidic range, and they're also active in the alkaline range, so it's, 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 uh, it's the best of both worlds. Now, so again, as far... Go ahead. Yeah, if... if and, and people always tell me this, like, okay, the, 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 the enzymes go into the stomach acid, and then they're denatured or they're killed off or they die. Well, stomach is acid not, is, if, as far true. as digestive enzymes go, those need acid, correct? Some of them. Oh, that's interesting. Hang on, Troy. I want to talk about that when we come back, and we'll talk about enzyme supplements as well. So hang on, Troy. i got one more, one more segment. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, talking enzymes with Troy Opperly. We'll be back after this break with more good health information. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Troy Opperly about enzymes. Troy, systemic enzymes versus digestive enzymes. What's the deal? Uh, again, mainly where they perform their duties inside the body. So with digestive enzymes, they're going to mainly stay focused uh, in your digestive tract. You know, they're going to pass through the stomach into the intestinal walls and then out the other end. With systemic, you take them away from food. You don't want, you want food present. They're able to travel through the stomach and then absorbed through the gut wall into the circulatory and blood system. So that's where they're going to do most of their work is out in your muscles, tissues, and organs. And when you talk about work, as far as an end user goes, as far as a, a, a patient goes, what can they expect? What can they expect from a deficiency and what they, can they expect from, by replacing them supplementally? Again, going back to enzymes only do two things. So whether it's in your digestive system or out systemically, they're going to speed things up, right? So if you're talking any kind of injury, I don't care if it's a, a little scratch or a cut or, a, or a, like a major injury, right, like a, like a car wreck or a, a broken bones, a heart surgery, things of that nature. It, cuts, it, it cut recovery times in half. Seriously. So if you want to recuperate faster, that's what you do. And then the second thing enzymes do is they break things down and clean things up. So, again, that's part of the healing and recuperation process. So it's getting all the debris and all the stuff out of those damaged areas of the body and speeding up recovery. Again, if we look at a lot of things, uh, 
uh, we do to ourselves. I mean, if we 